Hi, my name is Angela Sanstead, and this is my dad, Roy Simmons, and he's going to talk about his issues and experiences with uh, Diamond Resorts. Um, everything that you'll hear, or most of everything that you'll hear that he states, um, most of them fall under the definition of the FBI white collar crime, which is um, defined as being a victim of deceit, concealment, violation of trust, and bait and switch. And here's my dad. Hello, my name is Roy Simmons. I am retired from the post office and I was in the Navy for four years, so I am a veteran. Uh, we've been with Diamond for over 10 years, and I guess our problem started maybe around three years ago. Um, we took a trip to Hawaii, and it was quite enjoyable. While we were there, we talked to one of the sales reps, and he liked what our package looked like. He liked that, but he suggested joining the Hawaiian branch because he said it's uh, in the long run would be a lot better off. So we talked it over with my wife and I and we decided yeah we'll go ahead and do it. Um, there said to have been a lot of benefits by joining over in Hawaii instead of the mainland. So we did that, we joined the Hawaiian branch and we had, like I say, we had a good time. Well, about uh, six or eight months after that, we went, took a trip down to Florida. And again, we proceeded to talk to a sales rep. And he looked over what we had and he said, I, I see you went over to the Hawaiian branch. And then we said, yes. And he asked why and we told him. He said, well, you know, the mainland, your interest rate would be quite a bit lower. And you could save anywhere maybe two to three hundred dollars a month on interest. And um, we like that because our bills were getting up quite high. But anyway, we thought about it. And he also mentioned that um, over in Hawaii they have hurricanes and floods and that. And he said that uh, he has heard in the past that when there is damage over there, the expense is brought on by the people that own the place over there. And so we would have to have eventually pay, you know, we could end up paying thousands of dollars in assessments to get everything back to where it normally was. And um, we didn't like that. We. Um, talked it over and we didn't like the assessments and we liked the idea that we could save two to three hundred dollars. So we had everything switched back over to the mainland. And uh, man, we had a decent time in Florida. So six months or so after that we wanted to got a trip to Hawaii to stay at Maui and then a seven day cruise around the islands. And while we were there in Maui talk to another sales rep, they talk to you every place you go. And he, uh, again, liked what we had, but he didn't like the mainland thing. He said, why did he switch back? And we told him. He said, the interest rate's very, not much changed at all. I said, yeah, I noticed that. It only changed about 20 or $30 a month. And he said, uh, you know, you should have stayed in the Hawaiian one. And uh, so he talked to us and he said he had never heard of anybody paying extra assessments on their property over there. That uh, he doesn't know where that guy got it from, but uh, he had never seen it. And he said, you must have read off in the Hawaiian. He said that um, the shares can split and you can double your profits and he had also mentioned that we could take and sell or rent our property for a week or two weeks and it depends on what time of the year you could make anywhere from 
$3,000, $4,000 to $7,000 in one week by renting it out. And he said, you could do that twice, you could have it paid for. Your maintenance fees and a little extra. And, uh, you know, we listened to him and he said that probably within a year you'd be no longer be available to buy Hawaiian property because it's being all sold up, it's being all bought up. And uh, my wife liked it over there. So I said, well, okay, why don't we just fill out the applications and we can talk about it. So he had to fill out applications and he I filled one out and my wife filled one out and he said that put the, your combined income down and we did and then I fill, started filling out my assets, what my income was and I started filling out what my credit cards and I had put some of them down and he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm just putting down my credit card. He said, no, no, we don't want that. The only thing we want is your car loan and your mortgage. We don't want to need any of the other stuff. And uh, so he crossed that out on my credit cards. And then he had my wife fill out the same thing. And uh, he said, I'll put down your combined income. And uh, she did, and I questioned that on why we got to put down combined income. He said, well, that's the way they do it. That's the way he does it. So when they look at it, they're looking at you making twice as much as what you actually are because they're looking at both of them. And then they're combining them. And um, so your debt ratio, you know, you can afford almost anything by doing that. And that's where we got into it. And he said, no, he said, that's the way we do it and there'll be no problems with it. So I went ahead and I did fill it out. And uh, in the meantime, he said, we see a retirement income. You get the retirement from the post office and whatever. He said, you could take that and pay off your loan. And I said, well, what about penalties or interest. He said, well, he used to be a financial advisor. He said that he's quite sure that it would only be seven, maybe eight percent penalty on that, so he, it wouldn't be too bad. So I thought, you know, that, well, that's all it is. That's not bad at all. So we decided to finish filling everything out and um, we enjoyed our trip. When we got back to the mainland, I talked to a couple other financial advisors and they said, you got, well, he said, that's not right. He said, you're going to lose an excess of 40% extra. And I said, well, hold on. He said, I was told that this, he said, no, 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 no. He said, I, he didn't know where that guy was coming from, but it was an excess of 40%. So I proceeded to go ahead and contact the hospitality. And I got a hold of them. Took quite a few times to get a hold of them to actually talk to somebody. And when I did, then they gave me somebody else to talk to and so on. And I talked to a couple of them, people from hospitality, and I told them my situation. And they said, well, Sounds like this was a high pressure sale. It was kind of deceitful. And if it happened the way you did, there could be some fraud involved in it. The downright lying here. And so they told me to send out information, to send to hospitality all my income, my income, my wife's income, a copy of it and a copy of all my bills, including credit cards, any bills I got, and send them in, and they'll take a look at it. So I faxed it, and I didn't hear anything for about a month. So 
So I guess called, called, finally called somebody and talked to somebody, and they said, well, no, we never received it. I said, well, I got the copy of the fax in front of me, and it's got a date when I sent it, and that it did get received. Well, no, we didn't receive it, and so I said, okay, I'll send it again. Did it again, same thing happened. Waited about a month, didn't hear, gave him a call. No, we haven't received it. Third time, I sent it. Same thing, but I only waited a week that time. And uh, they said, no, we haven't received it. I said, I got three copies in front of me saying that you received each one. Well, where did you send it to? And I told them, they said, yeah, that's the right number. And they said, well, you'll have to send another one. I said, no, I'm not going to send another one. I've paid this out of my own pocket, figuring I'd find out something. And you guys find it. I'm not sending you another one. So about a week or two later, I got notified and said they did find it, and they're looking into it. Okay, about a month or so after that, I got a notice in the mail saying that they looked over it, and it got denied. Um, after about three times, I would think that would be, you know, enough. And uh, I wasn't too happy about it being denied. Um, so I didn't know which other way to go. My daughter started checking into some stuff and said, well, let's try this or let's try that. And uh, so this is what we're up to now on the video. And hopefully this will get somebody's attention. And um, a couple, couple other things here. Trust Pilot or even another Google Diamond. And listen to some of the complaints and some of the problems. Now, everybody doesn't have problems, but there are sure plenty that do. So before you decide to go into something like Diamond, do your investigating and see if it's if it's for you and if it's worth the hassle sometimes. Uh, that's about all I have to say. I'll turn it back over to my daughter. Thank you. I have a few few additions. Um, you know, there are other issues also. Um, there's been times that, you know, my mom's diabetic and she started going to shock and they have not been allowed to leave um, until paperwork signs. So, you know, make sure that if you're, you know, looking into Diamond, you know, do your research, you know, and if you're not ready to sign anything or you want to read stuff over, tell them no, you're not ready. Or, you know, if you have time, read everything over. Um, I've seen contracts where the points have been anywhere from $2 a point to $32 a point. So, you know, people, they, they fast talk and they'll make it seem like you're getting it for 30 or for $3 a point. And, but it's actually $32 a point. Um, take your time, do your own math, um, pay attention. Um, you know, like my dad said, go to the FBI, check TripAdvisors, you know, check, check Google, Trustpilot, you know, advocacy groups. Um, without um, being a part of the advocacy group, we wouldn't know where to go. And this has led us in the, um, and definitely the right direction. Um, for Diamond, the last two contracts that I've looked over for my parents, they, um, they'll run the credit report, you know, a hard copy of it, but in my opinion, it's not for, you know, whether you're going to qualify with the debt to income, it's just to see what the interest rate is going to be that they will give you, and that can be upwards of 16%. So, you know, just, be careful, um, you know, we do love using Diamond, you know, the family has gone on trips, they've taken the grandkids, um, so, you know, it's not all bad, um, but, uh, you know, please... Make sure you know what you're getting into. Um, you know, and um, if anyone from Diamond is watching, you know, the last contract was 78,000 points, it was everything combined, and we're asking for 20,000 of that, those points to be refunded, that part of the loan to be canceled, um, all deposits and loan payments in regards to that refunded. Um, you know, it has been filed with the Better Business Bureau and um, 
We will continue to file with the FBI, any Attorney Generals, whether it's Hawaii, Nevada, Minnesota, or all of them. And um, we will continue in any advocacy groups. Um, so um, thank you for listening, and I um, hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.